Hello and welcome. And in this video, we will talk about floor, ceiling and round, how to use it and how we can utilize it to control our geometry. For example, in this case, we'll be creating kind of like staircase effect just from the line. We'll then do the same thing over the sine wave just to check out uh, if our setup works on everything else that we have. And obviously, of course it does. So as you can see, we can sort of quantize the sine wave that we have and of course, it doesn't work just only on positions. In this case, we will be doing this kind of quantization effect on also on the colors of the noise that we distributed over our grid so that you understand that you can actually do all these operations, not just with positions of the points, for example, but also even with animation curves, colors, or any other input that you need to quantize. And then you have the output, for example, in the shaders to create a stylized effect. So let's start from the very beginning and check out how we're actually doing this. So let's begin with the line. And of course, the direction, let me enable the visualization of the points. All right, now you should see the points pretty well. And uh, let's say we have not just 50 points, but say let's 250 points. Okay, so we have a lot of points. That's all I'm saying. So the direction will be 110. Whoops, 110. You will see that it actually goes from 0 to 1, an X and Y axis. So what we're going to do now is, as per usual, drop the attribute pop, go inside get our position if you remember it's a vector and what we're going to do is we're going to extract floats from the vectors so we do it vector to floats press shift enter we'll have to construct vector back from the floats afterwards so we go to ftv float to vector here we go and uh, if we now connect everything as it is and do nothing we'll have the same results well business as usual right now we will talk about using the round as you can see, round to integer. We can also use ceiling. Here we go. And we can also use floor. So what this does is actually let me enable the geometry spreadsheet and we see that we have the position, let's say in the y-axis, and it goes from zero, from zero to 0.7. And what the round will do, it will round everything from zero to 0 0.5, right? From anywhere to here, it will round to zero. Everything above 0 0.5 will be one. So let's see if it does what it says, right? So let's say I get the F float value two, again, our Y axis, and I round it and get it here. And as you can see, voila, indeed it does what it says. Everything that was below 0 0.5 became zero. Everything that is above 0.5 became 1. Let's actually see if that is indeed what it happens. As you can see, this is our point that we remembered from the previous one, right? It became 1. Everything below became 0. All right. So just for demonstration purposes, right now, I will increase the length from 1 to, let's say, I don't know, 5, right? So as you can see, we increase the length a little bit. Let's do it something like... Something more pretty like this, right? Okay, so now we have points that go from zero to round five. And obviously we have this stair effects because it's rounding. So what does ceiling do? Ceiling, on the other hand, gets all the points. Let's get back and see what we have. Let's get all the points that are from, let's say, zero to one to actually points almost one, right? 0.985 something else it will make it one. Everything that is above one and below two will become two. I think visually it will be a little bit easier to understand. So let's connect ceiling here. And as you can see, the zero becomes zero, but everything that was above zero but below one became exactly one. Let's see. A again, this is the point that we had before, as you can see, 9, 0.98 something became 1. Everything that was 1 something became 2 right up still we get to the actual 2 which be, which um, becomes 3. So basically it's kind of like the rounding but everything that goes after the decimal point of our float becomes, becomes a rounded version. And the floor does pretty much the opposite of what ceiling does. Everything that will be below one 
and almost one will become zero. So it will be basically floored to zero. Everything that is above decimal point of one and up until the two will become one. So let's actually see what's happening so that we can basically visualize a little bit better. So I connect the floor and you will see that it again has the staircase effect, but it's pretty easy to understand visually. So we can see we go from zero to one, well, almost one, right? But unless it is just right above one, it does not become anything else. So it floors the number to zero. Again, everything that is just slightly above one, as we can see, and up to the two becomes one. So basically, again, it's kind of like rounding, but the bias is to the lower number. The ceiling, the bias is to the higher number, and the round, well, basically it has no bias, right? It goes from, it rounds the things right up in the middle. Below middle becomes anything in 0.5 becomes the lower number, anything above 0.5 becomes the higher number. If you remember, we actually made the length of our line like 6.3, so we can actually have something that is being constructed in such a way that we can actually see something. But if I, let's say, make, let's say one, right? So you can see that if we, for example, if we do the ceiling, we will see that we have this thing. And if I do the floor, we have this thing. It's just, well, it's nothing, right? How we can fix that? It's pretty easy. All we gotta do is first, we will multiply the position and then we divide by the same parameter of multiplication. Let me explain. So let's actually first create the parameter and let's uh, call it variable quantization. Hopefully I'm not making mistakes in the grammar. So anyway, so let's get the this value and multiply it. So we basically get the value multiplied by our variable of quantization and input that into floor. And we can now tweak it here, as you can see, something happening, something is definitely happening, but um, it kind of is becoming a little bit distorted, as you can see, so that's not exactly what we want. What we want is go back and then we divide it by the same parameter here. You will see that now if we tweak our variable, variable of quantization, we can actually tweak, tweak what we want, the quantization effect. All right, so that's pretty useful. The same effect I was using in the sine wave. First, let's get into the sine wave itself. As you can see, this is the sine wave. Well, it looks pretty much what you expect it to look. And if you are not sure how to create a sine wave, check out the video on that in the attribute vops. I recorded a video on explaining how to do just that. So now, as you can see, we again have this parameter is just called parm, but you will understand that it actually what it does. It's the same quantization thing that we had previously before. So if I enable this ceiling, you will see that it also has this stair stepping effect. And just for visualization purposes, floor is pretty much the same thing, but by a different rule. As you can see here, here in the lower part of our assigned geometry, everything is flooring like this. And with the ceiling, and with the floor again. So pre pretty much, I think you understand how it works now, right? So if we go out, whoops, if we go outside here and we tweak our parameter of quantization, you will see that we can have actually a really, really coarse looking geometry like this. And we can then make it more and more kind of defined um, with more resolution, so to speak. Obviously I'm using the word resolution. It's not exactly what I mean, but you see what I mean, right? So finally, I think it will be interesting to actually see how we created this effect of quantizing the colors. Let me disable the points. And again, this is just to illustrate that it works on anything and not just positions. So let's recreate this from scratch and get into grid. Create our grid first. Let's say 200 by 200. Whoops. Here we go. Pretty. I think that will be a nice resolution for us, but we can increase it anytime we want, obviously. And as per usual, and as per usual, we drop the attribute pop, shift enter, enter, and we're in. So what we do is we get the noise 
And for this one, let's say, um, I think I used unified noise previously. Let's say we use Voronoi noise. It looks kind of interesting. So we get the position of our points, fit it into the Voronoi noise, and the distance will be our colors. As you can see, we have this effect that we usually see in nature. It's kind of like the cells or even in the water or anywhere else. So basically a Voronoi all around us in the nature. So what we can do now is again, get our round the integer. And if we now feed the value into round the integer and output into the CD, you will see that it kind of becomes anywhere from black to white. There is nothing in between, right? So what we can do is multiply it and divide it by the same parameter. Let's create a parameter. So we get the distance here, parameter here. Then the result divided by the same parameter. And we go outside and this is our parameter. And of course, I forgot to input the multiplication here. Okay, so you will see now that we indeed can control into how many colors it is actually being divided. Uh, let's improve it a little bit so we get the float range from, let's say, 1, 1 to 15, right? And we, if we get outside, it's more doable right now. So basically what we're doing right now, if you used Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any other photo editing application, this, is, this effect is called posterize. Basically, the resulting colors right now is 15, but if we want, let's say, 5, or indeed 2, which actually results into three different colors, which is white, middle gray, and black, but you get the point, right? So the, the parameter 1 gets us two colors, the parameter, let's say, 3 gets us four colors, and so it goes. Obviously, if we increase the resolution a little bit, we get more defined result, but it doesn't really matter. You can see that we can control it and it's working pretty perfectly. And the result is very, very nice. Just for our personal entertainment, we can get the, uh, the color, we can get it from points to, let's say primitive. Then we can do the pull extrude, we can do the distance and local control will be CD. And of course, individual elements, so that we can have this pretty neat effect. And as you can see, let's me decrease the resolution a little bit because it, I think it thinks a little bit uh, too much. So now we can basically control the coarseness of our, let's say it's kind of like Lego water or Lego mountains, <laughs> kind of like this. So as you can see, we can basically have this geometry and it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty neat. So there you go. There's a lot that you can do with it. When I will be covering the Unreal Engine materials, uh, we'll be using that to make the lights flicker or to get the posterization effect on, let's say, tune shading outlines and all that kind of stuff. But the basics are pretty much the same. It works the same everywhere. If you're like coding in Python or doing shaders in Unreal, or just manipulating geometry. In Houdini, it doesn't matter. The rules stay the same and they behave the same, thankfully, because math is universal and that's really useful when you work with 3D. Anyway, hopefully you learned something and it's useful. If it's a little bit confusing, just play with it. Eventually you will get it. Rewatch the video one to five million times. A million views will be nice, but I understand that not everyone is really into rounding floats based on a parameter multiplication and division, but it's their loss. They're not interested in that because it's really pretty cool. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a nice day and I hope to see you in the next videos. If you don't want to miss anything, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.